people of Ghana is your Nigerian get pleasure. Bringing you political news in our channel and Akoma TV. According to Felix Ake and Porter, they have come out to say that actually NDCs are criminal minded. Please search. I have Felix Apia here with me. He's an interesting gentleman. He lives in Canada. He has a podcast, uh, which is the Felix Apia podcast. And he's going to talk to us about his political views. Uh, you might have seen him on podcast on social media once or twice, but here he is. Hello, Felix. Good evening. Hello, Senior Paul. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. How, how, where in Canada do you live? Uh, Toronto. You live in Toronto. Just about me, is there now. Yes. What's yes. he doing? Uh, actually, um, he's on his tour uh, to, to the U.S., and also to Canada, pretty much the Americas. And uh, there's also other things that he had to do, uh, especially in the U.S. They're having their 30th anniversary of NPP branch. And then uh, when you come to Canada, it's 32, 32 years since uh, the NPP branch has been... Canada started before the U.S.? Yes, yes they, oh, I, I think in history, they think they are the first... Uh, I mean, that international was the first branch. International branch that I was see. open. So uh, he went to Virginia uh, on Saturday, and then it was an amazing event, you know, uh, being able to uh, let people know the vision that he also wants to uh, bring in addition to what um, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwe Kufuado has done. And then he brought it again yesterday to Canada and uh, it was wonderful. Uh, it happened at the Church of Pentecost. And when you see the uh, pictures and the videos and also you see the way he was able to connect to the people, uh, one thing that has been a, a challenge for me when it came to him was that even though for Canada, I mean, he's gone to school there, he's worked there and all of that, uh, people were not still getting to get the damn like grabs of it that, hey, this is, this is the type of lead that we need if, if we really think that we need Ghana to be built like abroad. Mm -hmm. Because basically the things he's talking about or what he wants to do, that is what we are enjoying over there. So now he being there and finally they hearing it from him and how he wants to uh, around this country if he's given the opportunity to me i mean is the is the highlight and believe me people are buying into his agenda and i believe if we are able to uh, sell what you want to do more uh, we stand a better chance of uh, getting this country to a better place than i mean it is at this moment you are concerned that people are sort of um undermining akufado's legacy yes Tell me about it. Um, because, uh, Singapore, I went to school here for a bit. I went to Butri, I mean, for a bit, just for one term, though. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my pops had to, you know, obviously take me away to Canada. And before I was leaving Ghana, traffic lights was not even something that you would see often. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the only interchange that I know was the uh, Tetequashi runabout mm -hmm. and something out Kweji or something. Mm -hmm. So as time went on, as I was coming, I saw the improvement and stuff going on. And then when we compare what His Excellency Nanado has brought into the political space of Ghana, uh, especially in this Fourth Republic, I don't think there is any government or there is any president that holds his record. And Singapore, I can go sector. According to Felix he has actually come to make some solid point about the changes his have noticed so far and the improvements that this present government has actually brought to Ghana. By sector. Uh, talking about education, which is the most important thing. One funny thing is that uh, back in the days, people used to complain that, oh, we didn't have money, that's why we couldn't go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, money has been a challenge. Money has been a challenge. You go to the market, they'll tell you, oh, my daddy married too many and he couldn't take all of us, all those things. So he now coming inside to bring something that most, most regimes couldn't do or most, I mean, like presidents couldn't do and giving opportunity to the less fortunate and also leveling the playing field in terms of education because during our time when i was in ghana if your father or mother was not rich or if they were not from an affluent place you can't go to wesley girls you can't go to those places but today thanks to free shs we have kids like francisca laminin excelling at harvard and we have um, um, all those things now if you look at the slides right now we are looking at free shs and tvet mm -hmm. under this government over five million kids has benefited from this. These are kids that would have otherwise been on the street selling, like we used to come to Ghana and see them on the street. Mm -hmm. Singapore, I can emphatically say that since I came, the number of little kids that you see selling on the street, it's not there no more. I was asking my driver that, what happened to all the kids? People are selling on the street. Though. Well, people are selling, but we are seeing the grown-ups selling more than the kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. right now it's their mothers and fathers 
and uncles who are selling these uh, donuts and these dog because they've stuff. gone to school because they've gone to school and that is something that every country is supposed to look at it like this is a big 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 achievement for us if you have over five million people benefiting from just uh, um, free education if you have tvet back in the days they would tell you to go and uh, 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 excuse me to use the keyword go to things and for job these days you don't have that happening no more find a school that is doing it register and get yourself a hand i'm the handwork be a uh, um, carpentry whatever that you want to do technical vocation it's free it was never free you mm -hmm. see it was never free mm -hmm. so when somebody is giving you something this of this great magnitude and you tell me that that person hasn't done nothing but the person who actually couldn't provide chalk for students to write with or for teachers to teach with it should rather come back then we don't really think about ghana it's like it's not about ghana developing it's about maybe where we stand in terms of political stance so maybe i'm an ndc so i would i would just say anything or i'm an NPP, i'll say anything but when the records are there and the records are speaking for it it's hard for you to say these are not facts or these are not true and i think that we've not done a good job in terms of letting people know the amount of work that has been done we are talking about stem schools same i mean stem schools is the new way to go now this government started i remember when they introduced this whole stem thing some of these uh, excuse me to use the word big ndc works like the mr blockers and them were going on like this is nothing like you know i'm like they, and they couldn't do it they couldn't even deliver two stem schools unless they have the record to show indeed for this is mind-blowing and eye-opening so the has actually come to prove every point that this present government has actually done wonders and it's something people can actually see and know about it so you couldn't provide it for them somebody is providing it and you're telling them that they should sack the one who is actually providing this necessities to people and bring you in because you feel ghana is eight years eight years so we too we are coming it doesn't work like that ghana cannot develop if we cannot i mean uh, uh, um, um, consolidate our gains and make sure that they go in the right ways and making sure that we improving them as we go we have over a school feeding program and this mm -hmm. one is very very important when President Kufo brought it, if anybody could check the records, as he was leaving office, we had about close to 500, I mean, I mean, a like thousand kids that were enjoying this type of thing. Now, and when, when the school feeding program. Yes, when yeah. NDC were leaving, it was close to a million or pretty much a million. As we speak now, we have over 3.8 million kids who are benefiting from this. The, you see, like the good thing about mm -hmm. it is that Kids who didn't even want to be in a classroom, once they knew if they go, there will be food. Yeah, they food, wait yeah. and then they go. And then once they eat, they will stay mm -hmm. and then get. So, so these are systems that transforms a nation. Um, first and foremost, a political party is supposed to bring a government that is supposed to uh, uh, rule the country and then put the country right. It's not mm -hmm. to, just to feed its political party. Yeah, right. yes, that's so, correct. Because in Ghana here, what I see is that if the president is not throwing money at the party headquarters or not giving it to people, that means he, he has not worked. Because if you look at the figures, especially where we have reached at this time, and you look at the legacy that this man has left, that we're supposed to continue. And you walk in town and all they're talking about is, oh, 2016, a ball of kenke was two cities. Now a ball of kenke is five cities. But, but that's relevant, isn't it? No, I don't think so, Senior Paul. Because prices are not constant. I don't think prices are constant. I don't think anything... Yeah, yeah they know that, but they are attributing it to the prudence of a government, the way in which a government works to make sure that food and essential commodities mm -hmm. are at a price where people can afford. Okay. That may be the point they are making. Okay, so now let's do a comparative analysis. To which countries are they comparing it to that things are expensive? Have they been to Togo? They're comparing it to Ghana in the past. No, no, Ghana in the past, but then, you see, that is the problem I have. You cannot tell me that in 2016... You bought um, um, Kinky for two cities. So after eight years, you expect Kinky to stay at two cities. Economically, it's not even sensible. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So it's not about... But prices in Canada, where you live, have not astronomically gone... It has gone, it, Singapore. Over the last eight years. Singapore, it has gone. For the first time in, since I've been to Canada, like, I mean, 24 years in Canada, okay? And it was only during the COVID time and now that I'm hearing the word inflation. Something that you would not hear. You understand but that is telling you the reality of it for i mean like for instance um 
just a gallon of oil that we used to buy at $5.99. Cooking oil. Cooking oil. Right mm -hmm. now, you're buying it at $16, $18. If you're not lucky, you buy it. If you shop at Costco and those places, you are buying it at $25. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Let, let the people who are... According to Feliz, that actually come out to say that this thing, this food drives is global. And people of Ghana is just comparing it with the previous years, not minding that things are really growing and other countries are still experiencing this thing. Please don't forget to like, comment, follow. Put on notification bell so you get all our news one by one. Thanks, my people.